Brazilians. I think it definitely wants to go first still. Now being X1, six wins, one loss, zero draws for both of our players here. Yeah. Right, it looks like Blackwing does get to lead. That small, small world like a card we haven't seen a whole lot of this tournament. Able to use the magma. Oh, that's one magma gone forever. Able to banish that as well as a monster uh, with at least one thing different. Or rather, ex they need exactly only one thing in matching. common. Yeah. Everything and else cannot be the same. And then keep that trend going. One on, again, only one thing co in common with a third thing added. Very hard to explain concisely. Yes. But trust me, it works. But we get to go to Simoon. That's a that's the perfect starter for Blackwing. So remind me again. It allows you to normal summon it and then immediately uh, put a Black Whirlwind on the field. Yes. Now that Black Whirlwind doesn't necessarily will stay on the field later on. It does get sent to the ground. I believe you do take a bit of damage for that as well. For cost, yeah. Reveal, That's good. Oh, there's the yes. Vada. There's the Vada reveal for the Simoon. That's going to put the Black Warwind, and then it's going to normal summon it with the Black Warwind on the field. I will normal summon it. Wow, that's, that's a turbo pack Black Warwind, too. You know he loves this deck. Oh, that is a, that's a blast from the past. Mm -hmm. uh, Black Wings. The flashbacks. So how this works is uh, Banish Reveal. Yeah, that's that's a, I believe oh, okay. that's a Sudri. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, oh, that's crazy. Uh, His opponent again. is very aware of what it does. Yeah, I, I was really different. hoping he'd explain for all of us. Yeah. Yep, go ahead, and we're going to provide it with a second normal summon. So the first normal summon was the effect of Simoon, so now we get the normal summon of Sudri. Yep, they're using his regular normal summon there. And they also get to add another card, too. Uh, Sudri on summon will be able to add a card that mentions Black Wing Dragon. Yep, and then Shamal okay. being added, they're able to discard it to go ahead and activate the Black uh, Feather Whirlwind. Okay. The other Whirlwind. Mm -hmm. That one provides you with an additional summon. Now we, now we get to see the summon of Vada. If you control Blackwing, you're able to special summon it, similar to Bora and Gale in previous iterations. Now, this is like a pseudo-synchro summon. You get to send to the graveyard a monster from the deck and more or less just act as a Sorry, synchro I'm summon. And it's going to summon out Blackwing Dragon. Uh, a lot of the newer Blackwing cards, they focus more on the Blackwing Dragon so aspect of the deck rather than just on the Blackwing monsters, monsters themselves. Uh, I think it's like really similar, like honestly, to the... The Red Dragon Archfiend stuff, like where they're all themed around Red Dragon Archfiend and mm -hmm. they all bring back Red Dragon Archfiend. So like I think it's almost leaves. exactly the same, yeah, but yeah. for Crow. We'll yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's actually quite nice. Maybe each of the signers uh, will be able to get their own version. I guess Stardust also has that going for it. Does, does Black Rose have something like that? Nope. Maybe. Maybe. Well, they have the Ruddy Rose Dragon, the yeah. whole Rose Dragon package. That card does summon Black Rose for no reason. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So the Blackwing Dragon is on the field. That's a very scary monster. It starts to enable more and more of these plays. Having a Dark Synchro on the field is the strategy we're going to be moving forward with. That's going to allow and open up like a lot of different plays as well. Yeah, we see a lot of Blackwings on the field, but we have to also pay attention to all those Blackwings in the graveyard. There's several effects that are active now because he does control the Blackwing Dragon on the field, just a Dark uh, Synchro monster. Are we going to be uh, Synchro summoning into Nothung? That's going to provide another normal summon for the Blackwing player. Yep, and he's using Shamal here Same on the summon of a uh, Synchro Monster. He's able to banish itself, add back one of the monster, and take 700 damage. I believe on Nothing Summon, there is also damage to be dealt as well, so gotta play quick. Uh, he's gonna hurt himself and also his opponent. Yep. Banishes to target this to add back to hand. Yeah, we're gonna be retrieving resources with the uh, Shamal. Yeah, yeah. If, if, yeah, yep. That Shamuk sent earlier attack. is going to be able to add back to hand. If he controls Dark Synchro, that's going to be a quick effect, effect negation on the opponent's turn as well. Or, I mean, just whenever. So but yeah. As long as you control so a, uh, a Synchro Monster on the field. I believe it has to be a Dark Synchro. Mm -hmm. You are, like, Vada and actually locks you into Darks yes. for the, the turn as well. I guess for, for D'Angelo, it doesn't really matter. His whole extra deck is probably going to be all Dark anyway. Um, I think it, like, it probably does make a large enough difference. Normally, when you're summoning this many level 10 Synchros, it, the fact that there's not a Baron on the field, that's pretty good. I'm okay with that. And there is a Nibiru activated. Ah, that is the bane of that deck's existence. Some told me to play around it. But he played right <laughs> uh, into the uh, Nibiru. I mean, I don't know how much he played into it. Maybe he can extend a little bit further. But this does turn off all the uh, effects in the graveyard that require you to have a Synchro on the field. There's still Zephyros, though. Zephyros can still carry its weight. Zephyros can uh, return that Black Whirlwind uh, on the field back to the hand to summon itself back onto the field. And that's also going to dodge the effect that's normally going to cost you some life points from Samoon's effect that would send the Black Whirlwind to the grave. Mm -hmm. Oh, now they got to calculate all that attack yeah. points. 
Yeah, that token uh, is not allowed to attack ever. If it does, it's, uh, uh, it's doing quite a bit. You just need to have an answer for that. I imagine Unchained will have not that much of a difficult time. No, so. <laughs> it is Unchained. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's ways to perhaps maybe synchro it off of the field, maybe. That's a special summon. We're seeing a Triple Tactics Absolutely. Talent activated because the Nibir did get activated. Oh, it looks like he's going to draw two. That's desperation moves right there. You know he's digging right okay. now. Is that the biggest tell? You need to draw two? Yeah. If you're drawing two, that means you don't feel safe. You need to keep going. It looks like he drew up Hosperity and uh, maybe another Small World. One card that he can't activate, and then the other card, I mean, it's a spell. I mean, Prosperity doesn't feel good. Yeah. <laughs> it, never, it never feels good, especially off of the talent. He's already had to commit several normal summons, so I don't know how many summons he has left. And, uh, well, nothing's not on the board anymore. Oh, it's Super Polymerization. That's the other card he drew. I think that could come in handy. Surprisingly, Unchained is very resilient to something like that, though. There's not many points that you get to actually activate it. It's going to really depend on how Brian plays into that Super Poly. Super Polymerization, having no way to respond to it is very scary, but knowing Unchained, Unchained plays Fire, Water, and Dark, so not the easiest attributes to kind of mix and match. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That puts you to 7,000 to my 72. Yes. But at the very least, there's a Nibiru and the Nibiru token. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's going to maybe amount to something if there is the appropriate target. I think at the very least, an SP Little Knight will take care of that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Go. The Black Whirlwind was sacrificed, opting not use his Ephra, save it for oh the follow-up mayor if he can manage to get another turn. Yeah. I saw Brian's hand earlier. He has Tour so guide. much gas. Oh, there is Tour Guide from the Underworld. Yeah, there's Tour Guide on, on the field already. There's a Shavara in the hand. There's an Aruha in the hand, and he already has an escape as well. He just has to navigate this turn as best as he can. And there's the Fiendish Rhino Warrior. That is the one card setup required for this deck. Oh, Nibiru, that feels like almost like a, a blowout card almost. It, it is absolutely a blowout card. The Blackwing strategy really wants to take advantage of opponents not really trying to stop to what you're point, doing, try you. to break your board after the fact. That the uh, Blackwing deck will make a board that cannot be broken. Mm -hmm. But... A Nibiru typically you're not maybe not something you expect right now because it's not as popular for all the decks because every strategy currently has ways to just play around it so it's not typically seen in the main deck but you know when you do find it in a place like this it's absolutely punishing and we get to the Unchained Soul uh, Lord of Yama that's going to add one and the Fiendish Rhino War has sent to the graveyard a Shavara to set up a new chain link right after this. It looks like he's adding, yeah, Abominable Soul here, because he already has everything else. He I had the Shavara, he had the Aruha, and Start then now he just gets a free summon whenever he needs to to go ahead and destroy another card, maybe yeah. go after the set before it does too much damage. But I imagine he's not too worried. He's just going to go through his standard line as well, set up Shyama, and Shyama can just go after it as well. I think at this point, you've got to be very careful about dropping two darks on the mm. field. That could lead to the super fall. You might be able to wall up. Aruha, target trap. Or will uh, D'Angelo be patient enough to wait for the proper end board before flipping the card? Maybe there is an opportunity there, but it's going to be very, very difficult. I don't think he'll have that opportunity, mainly because as soon as Shyama activates his effect, he's yep. going to go after it. Yep. Right? Like, there's so many points where that it's going to be baited. It's going to summon Alan Chain from the deck. I can't imagine Brian is going to allow uh, that to stay in the back. Yeah, right? he's just going to. Like, he's set up right now. Good. Yeah, so th again, this field cannot be super polyed. Maybe the Nibiru and the Nibiru token can turn into Garura, but I think you're also okay with that. I mean, you do get to draw a card. You might be forced into it, but you also have to discard a card to go mm -hmm. to pay the cost. More or less, you're just trading, mm -hmm. trading for the cost there. And I think the Nibiru token is just way bigger. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely more of a threat at this point. All right, if Shyama just uses its effect here. Yep, we're going to destroy the uh, Aruha. And if Ahuihai gets destroyed, that's going to summon out another Unchained Monster from the deck. Likely Sarama at this point. And that's just going to lead to a whole line of monsters being summoned from the deck. And the, uh, the destruction effect from uh, Shayama doesn't target. It does not. Not on your opponent's side. Not on the opponent's side. That's right. That's a wonderful way to clear out some of the spells and traps. Now, Shayama, honestly, just so good. Uh, yeah, he's thinking about if he needs stores. to go to Guru or not. I mean, we've seen the Shayama into mm -hmm. some of the uh, Tielman decks as well, because it's also matching the level of six. Yeah. Which works for, like, Beatrice. It lets you I pop those it. Sullix, those Screams that you don't need to use, or you can set a tier name, get those off the field. Like, Shayama just does so much. It's just a generically good card. Mm -hmm. And doesn't lock you into anything. 
No. Uh, that's actually the surprising part. Uh, now we get to go to Aruha. The Super Poly has been destroyed. D'Angelo is now in the passenger seat, just basically looking at seeing what's going to happen here. He might want to just bluff a Nibiru in his hand or any other form of response. Everything else has been tested for. Mm -hmm. So it's only a Nibiru, and that is immediately answered by Caesar right now. Yeah. There's no way anymore. Now we just have to clear off that token. Which, I mean, anguish into whatever he wants can also do that. But if he just has, yeah, Shervara pop the set escape right now, I think Shavara that's going part. to lead him as far as he needs to go. Yeah, this might be the... Oh, yeah, Abominable Soul might. that we knew he added will also just be able to discard a card and so, like, just yep. get rid of it. And uh, There's already all the damage needed right there. Effects. Discard. Yep. Effect, yep. discard, and we're going to be destroying the token. I, battle, battle phase, this will, yeah. this will take it. And that's exactly what happened. Yep, quick game one here. It's not going to let Unchained start, even though it did show a strong showing of how powerful it is going second. It looks like there is a copy of Druid Swarm and Infinite Impermanence in Brian's hand. It looks like he's going to be paired here. Oh, starting with a Bestial Rebellion of D'Angelo Zone. We did see Magnum at game one. This is a Bestial Blackwing deck. Really focusing on how easy it is to make those level 10 synchros, I think. Yeah. I mean, those level 10 synchros have been... Probably the synchro choice right now in terms of like the level that we're choosing. We got Baron, we got Dispater. We have, uh, I believe, the the Blackwing, the Blackwing level ten synchro, as well. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of options. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder, like, what you prioritize because we really just saw the majority of the Blackwing combo earlier, and now that we see full access to the Bestial line, we have Serenir and, and Le uh, Lebellion already on the field. Probably getting access to regained if Lebellion is allowed to hit the field. Mm -hmm. I want to see just how deep it goes. It looks like he actually did keep Super Polarization in his deck as well. Now, is th this is going to activate? It's going to go off. It's going to banish uh, the Lebellion to summon out the Serenir. Okay, so l that means likely Serenir, if it hits the graveyard, will send another copy of Lebellion because he does want access to that regained. If anything, now if Brian has his own Bestial cards, that's yes. going to be quite the challenge to resolve anything or try to maintain the resource in the graveyard. He looks like he's using the Serenir uh, to tribute summon. One. Interesting. That's very neat. That is a committed normal summon, so that's going to be the tribute summon. Well, at least you're not going to be sending it away any time. That kind of just shows how weak D'Angelo's hand is, because that is the one that gives you the extra normal summon and searches Black Whirlwind immediately, right? Yeah, that is the one. So he doesn't have another Blackwing in his hand? Definitely not. I think he, if he did, he would have generated two Black Whirlwinds and get a double search, since Black Whirlwinds aren't even once per turn, or, or the copies are not even once per turn either. But that's going to allow the uh, Bestial Serenir to send another copy of Lubellion into the graveyard. This is perfect. He doesn't have to use his Infinite Permanent, or like his uh, Druid Swarm cur currently. There isn't a dragon on the field that would really threaten the Lubellion coming out, but as soon as a dragon does hit the field, he's going to want to use that Druid Swarm or uh, anything along the lo those lines. He, and then he's likely just going to have to use Impermanence on the Vata right now if he knows, uh, which I think he did say he was aware of this matchup, or he's at least aware of the Blackwing deck. So he knows what he's going to use his responses on. Uh, That's activating. Lucky. And impermanence target Vada negating the effect. Yeah, this is a huge, huge inter point of interaction here because essentially this card uses is Foolish Burial for two while also summoning a monster. Mm -hmm. Keeping that Zephyros out of the graveyard is going to be a huge resource. So now D'Angelo's going to be really struggling. But it's still a tuner on the field, right? Is there, yep. Does it lock you out of synchroing with anything else? I don't think so. I think I'm not even sure if he's even uh, dark locked at this point. <laughs> I imagine he doesn't play anything else because you yeah. you're you're likely going to be dark like the most of the games you play. So it looks like he's just going to go synchro for is that eight uh, or maybe seven? Seven. Does he have a appropriate monster summon out? He looks like he's looking at Draco Berserker of the Tenny, so I imagine that that is a synchro eight if that guy is a level six. Yep, that's Draco yep. Berserker of the Tenny. I mean, it's a pretty good choice. I mean, on activation, you get to just banish that's whatever right. that's activating. Yeah, really strong against a deck like Unchained with so many effects that activate in the hand. A very efficient way to remove them. Oh, for sure. And it looks like he's just I think passing might, on that. I might even counter that Druid Swarm. <laughs> he might. I think he has to. But that's why Brian's not going to be uh, not going to want to activate it until his turn, so that he doesn't allow the Berserker to get as much value. Mm -hmm. His hand is kind of weak. It looks like he has several trap cards and a Fiendish Rhino Warrior. Oh, Shavara, oh. that'll do it. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> the deck is just so consistent. <laughs> So he just has to lead with the Druid Swarm, oh, yeah. and then he can normal summon the Rhino uh, if he doesn't use the effect on the Druid Swarm immediately. Sets. If he sets one now and activates the Shivara, And then he chains the Berserker to banish the Shivara, that could be really detrimental here. Does the destruction still go through? It just banishes. Uh, but Shivara. 
you know, I need to check the wording on that. I believe that Delangelo is also checking on the wording on that. Because it really depends on how the conjunctions are put together here. Because you still have to do as much as possible. Sure. Uh, destroy it, and if you do, special summon this card. So, it so would. yeah, that's still going to happen. And therefore, the Escape of the Unchained is going to activate in the graveyard. Perfect. Completely playing uh, around the Draco Berserker of the Genie. I, I still don't know how important, like, how much value are you putting on this Druid's Room that you're holding that instead of having the Shavara hit the field? But I guess yeah. like, he, does, he does have a lot of trap cards in his hand, and he does have Fiendish Rhino Warrior, so it's not like he necessarily needs to. I mean, once he gets to the normal summon and he can land two Fiends on the field, we're going to see the Lord Yamad. That's going to lead to uh, basically a repeat of uh, game one. Absolutely. I think, I think you kind of just want to summon Saram here. Oh, no, okay. Oh, th this makes sense, actually. Clear the last set and then just kind of do whatever you want. And I think it is just a super polymerization again. So, Shyama going to activate this effect, destroying another trap card here. I think it is a different one. It's Chamber. Oh, another name is yeah. going to be put onto the field. That is not looking too hot. And it is super poly. I, again, Chamber. this is something that maybe you have to kind of side out. Because mm -hmm. if it's not working out the first time, this is starting to look like game one all over again. Yeah. If it was a copy of Deck Lockdown, this game could be very different. Oh, definitely. I think... I think uh, Daniel might have bought a whole turn. If it was deck lockdown, you can't special summon from the, the deck. deck. Yeah. You can't add cards from the deck. This might be easy to roll for you. I didn't see none of my extenders. And now we get a Shavara summoned out. Now we're going to take both of them and Link like just summon. Yeah, Link summon Yama. Looks one? like he's never going to actually attempt to use the Druid Swarm. He just knows he doesn't need to. It doesn't, the Berserker doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. He's just going to try to play his game as normally as he can. You just more or less have to destroy it or just remove it via a card effect. And mm -hmm. I think... The board's going to be open season for damage. Opting to set another copy of Chamber instead of something along the lines of Wailing. Maybe he doesn't play Wailing. Looks like he doesn't. Some people consider it as a brick. Mm -hmm. I'm searching for a deuce, right? That's, that's what I'm doing. Say one I'm, more time. I'm resolving this, right? I'm okay, searching. Chain link one, chain link two. I'm resolving this, yes. Chain link one, chain two. I'm resolving this. And we're going to set, and now, and now we're going to get the ad uh, from yeah. Lord Yama. I wonder what you go summon? for. Like he what? has not normal summon, so getting no. Sarama could prove valuable, but he's used every single one of those effects. It's maybe about getting the Rhino out of his hand? Is there a way to, to just send one of the fiends from your hand to the grave? No, but I think if he's able to okay. find a way to special summon Sarama, that would be the, uh, the big thing, because then you could just normal summon Phoenix Rhino Warrior, and then Rhino can send a name that you're not planning to use, and Sarama can oh. reset that name and then trigger it. Okay, and now we summon out a Rakea, yep, and we'll that's going to be destroyed by Shayama, and it's going to summon Shayama back onto the Rakea field. Effect. Rakea effect, that's going to summon another Unchained Monster from the deck. I think now Sarama makes a lot of sense. And get that reset. This was set this turn, right? You didn't set it from deck and, yeah. yeah. I wonder what that's, what he's pointing at. There's nothing really set on the field at the moment. I think it's more or less pretty open. Yeah. The only thing you have to worry about is Nibiru. Which I don't know if you're fully expecting from D'Angelo going first. That deck, I mean, if the Super Polymerization is still in the deck, I guess it's possible. It looks like, okay, he's linking away the Shyama here. And he's going to use the Anguish to link away with... It's going to link with us. And now we're going to use the Draco Berserk of the Tenye as a link material for Anguish. Yep, going to go into Abomination here. I'm wondering, does this actually set up the damage that he needs? Because is there going to be an effect that triggers the Sarama here? Because then that would be good enough to at least trigger the Yama in the grave. He just needs one more destruction at this point. Can you go Sarama effect, target something in the graveyard, just destroy the card in the graveyard, and then just get a mass amount of summon? I think, uh, yeah, all he has to do uh, is Sarama, so revive the Rakea. Oh, he can oh, reset the Rakea. But he's already used the Rakea, yeah. so then he can Yama, Yama just summon back a monster. I, I don't think this is the cleanest line. I think he's playing into Nibiru pretty heavily here. But I don't think D'Angelo has it. Uh, Shyama effect? Yeah, you good. Shyama effect? Yep, he's using the effect of Yama. After reviving the Anguish, he's opting to use the destruction. There's the damage. Yep, I mean, he had the Druid's Room in hand as well. Mm. But that is enough. Brian moves on. 2-0 against the Bestial Black.